Good evening and welcome to this July 17th, 2017 regularly scheduled Midland Public School Board of Education meeting. At this time, if everyone would turn off their cell phones, appreciate it. And if you would all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. At this time, I'll take roll. President Branstad, I'm here. Vice President Singer is absent this evening. Secretary McFarland is also absent. Uh, just Treasurer for safe. Here. All right. Member Baker. Here. Member Blasey. Here. And Member Fridell. Here. All right. So that is five out of seven. Excellent. Moving into item two, which is our consent agenda. 2.1 is approval of the regular meeting minutes from June 26th. 2.2 is the following staff member who has announced her resignation. 2.3 is adoption of Midland School Code Articles 105, 105C, which is schools of choice. 2.4 is our district school improvement plan. 2.5 is textbook approval. And 2.6 are legal invoices for payment. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve items 2.1 through 2.6 on the consent agenda. Okay, moved by Patrick, support by Mary. Is there any discussion? Um, there was the note that the agenda group realignment was to be attached to the final minutes as it states in those minutes. <coughs> okay. They are, they're filed with them, right? They're filed they, with them? That's the actual terminology we use when we make a... Okay, so it's um, part of it. Yeah. Okay. Just Good. like if we, if we do yep. the... Uh, uh, motion tonight for the road closure piece for Dow, it would be attached to the minutes. Okay. I'm good. All right. Is okay. there any other discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Moving into three. 3.1. I'll take that. Take that. Um, 3.1 is a purchase that we're recommending tonight. It's for our district radio communication system. Um, I guess the short story is that we have been without a repeater system for quite a while since that antenna at Midland High got uh, hit. Um, It it really affects our communication on the northern part of the district. Um, We also have only analog radios and we just started to switch over. So uh, especially in light of this last winter, we had a couple situations where um, even cell phone reception out there is not very good. Uh, that we had a little trouble uh, communicating, thought it was time, and we uh, did a little trial. You can see we already purchased some for the buses. We did a trial where we uh, put the digital ones on there, and we're able to, going through someone else's antenna, uh, communicate quite well instead of the garbleness that we got before. That was a good thing. So what you're seeing here are three parts of uh, what we hope that we bring to you uh, over time, because you can see the cost involved. Um, we're going to get all the buses switched over to digital radios, which is almost a must. The analog systems can't be supported much longer. Um, You'll also see, and that's the first one, the 10 radios you'll see, that will get us up to uh, all but 19 buses. They'll also give us a digital receiver um, for the base station, if you will. Um, You'll see another 20. There are three of one type and 17 of the other. That's for our uh, technicians, uh, the um, computer technicians, and also our skilled trades, maintenance grounds. Um, what we find with them especially, uh, these are handheld, the three are more like supervisory and the other 17 are heavier duty, the men out in the field that are in different spots, they can be very hard to reach on any uh, communication device we have now, something in their vehicle doesn't make a whole lot of sense because lots of times there's some place like a roof and we're trying to get a hold of them and so this would bring us up to date there. And the last thing you see here is the actual repeater tower that will bring us up to our own tower. Uh, Those three items together come to a total of $40,604.92. 
Um, I guess I would add as part of the program as we've been talking to the radio people, we'll get more details and we mentioned this at FFO, we'd like to see this um, stretched also to our building level. They have communication systems that would integrate with this, uh, multiple channels, also can hook right into 911 eventually. Uh, so this would be a plan as we go forward to try to, for our safety and security of all our students, um, bring that into play. Um, with the right antenna equipment, we're not there yet. This gets us the basic communication. We could also have GPS on our buses to know where they are in a real-time situation. You can get some GPS, but it's like at five or 10 minute intervals as opposed to one minute intervals, so you know exactly where you're at. Uh, that we're not bringing to you right now. We need to do some more research on that, make sure that's the right product. Uh, it would also help us when we do that down the road. Um, if you've been in any of our buildings, there's like 10 different walkie-talkie systems that everyone uses and some are good and some not so good, and we think this would standardize all that. Uh, and also, if people wanted to buy more, there'd be a set model to go with that, that would give us that power. So what we're asking for tonight is to get our buses there, our maintenance, field trades, and um, computer technicians, and also to get our tower uh, so we're not leasing off someone else's uh, tower for some of it, and to keep our communications to the north solid. All right, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve item 3.1. Support. Okay, moved by Patrick, support by Scott. Is there any discussion? Bob, I did a, just look this up just briefly because I have experience with radios and um, these are great radios. I have no problem with the purchase. Um, but reading into it a little bit further, did they talk to you about what the cost is when we get a full? Blown system put together to bring in the wave technology so that you have full integration of all of your platforms together so that as an example they showed that Superintendent Charo could actually be on his cell phone talking to a bus driver on the two-way system it's a and right computers that. and all all devices and all platforms we brought together so that yep, the, the whole one, network works together and the one part that we do energy. know is that premium antenna system is what I'm going to tell you to start with mm -hmm. that has the multi-channel because if you don't get a multi-channel you'll have uh, the skilled trades guy talking over a playground person so you have to have multiple channels uh, that cost and what we're about to spend the 14 on the tower almost 15,000 there's part of it was right around 89,000 that's the biggest part of this the rest is just how many radios do you want to work with the system so we know that in fact the schools we'd look at, a, it's a little, uh, it's a toned down version, doesn't have as much on it for the people that are out of playground duty or whatever. Still communicates the same way, just wouldn't have all the features that are there. So what we know right now is that that tower would cost, if we brought it today, 89000 minus this fifteen. So we know that cost. The other is talking to, and we just started talking to our principals, okay, if we had to set you up at an elementary school, what would you need? Base unit? about how many phones would you need to make that system work. So that part I know that an individual one was running four to 500 as opposed to these costs, but we really haven't gone any further than that on that. We know the, what the antenna system that will get us that uh, interaction between everything, uh, we know that price. And that's, what, that's where we're at. Tor, I, we have kind of a three, four year plan is what our goal is to get to where you're going but until we have the antenna which would be the next thing we may come back to you for in additional bus radios as you can see we're not the, quite the whole fleet. The other thing I guess you should mention the state police have a program where yes. you can write for grants but you can only do them in November and then you have to spend it so we're at a point where we really need the radios in this part up and running but our intention was then before that November deadline we would write uh, have the plan together and write it and let's see how much uh, money we can get that way before we come back and, and hit the general fund. If that can get us the rest of the antenna, if it is schools, or we can write it over multiple years, uh, we would do those things. And our understanding is most school districts who have written for that have been successful, so it's probably you know a good good uh, gamble to wait and then ask for see if we can get the grant to cover the rest of that or good portion of it anyway. So yeah, the, the question is that's our goal, Brad. We're not there yet, but all this equipment would convert to to that. Okay. And then also, just we can rent off of his antenna mm -hmm. to do that now, but the cost was pretty large. Okay. So I, I think with our size, the goal would be to have our own antenna so we don't have to. Okay. Then I saw the discounts, which were listed down here. 
And then I, I just happened to look on the web page and you got the $1,200 for the two sets of 10 phones as your discount. But right on the web page says you also get a $500 discount for when you buy that SLR 8000 antenna. So I would ask you to ask them for a $500 if that We'll, we'll check on that. Sometimes when it's, and you wouldn't see this on their website, um, if it's the, off the state bid, which is already a reduced amount, you can't get that additional amount. Sometimes that they've already, and I think you can see it, some machines lean into it, there was like a 30% state bid uh, discount. Um, and so sometimes they won't allow that, but certainly we'll check on that and, and make sure. Like I said, sometimes because of the state bid already being so much lower than what they list out to the public, um, you, you can't get that discount. But I'll check. Okay. All right. Are there, is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, moving into 3.2. 3.2 is, as we've talked before, as we've been doing a little bit better, um, is a purchase of another uh, maintenance, in, or in this case, skilled trades vehicle. Um, we're recommending the purchase of a 2018, it's a Ford Transit high cargo van um, that we'll use with skilled trades. Um, it's the state bid. You'll see that it also has with it uh, where they've configured the back of the vehicle uh, with by the contractor. Um, that's one thing that our insurance companies uh, are recommending more and more other than you going out and constructing your own back of vehicle. Um, if something were to happen, um, that could be an issue. Um, we also looked like we would on any state bid at the other uh, main branch you would think of. Uh, Chevrolet on the state bid did not make a high van, so that kind of rules it out for uh, what we would use it for. And the Dodge that they had is a front wheel drive. We do tow with this, generators, things like that. Um, and so that wouldn't have uh, met our capabilities. Um, I guess the other thing is, you'll see it put in here. This will take a while to purchase. This was something that we talked about bringing to you last year. Um, but it's one of those things they stopped making very early. So it's like, <coughs> you have to have your bid in before September and then you have to wait while they only make so many. Uh, that was the problem last year that when we were going to put the bid in it was like there's nothing left in that so uh, I forget if the cutoff date September so we thought we should bring it to you now so that uh, we can get it in before the make and then fingers crossed we get it uh, sometime you get this calendar here but there's no guarantee it's just a matter of they only make so many of these all right I'll entertain a motion For the purchase of the uh, Ford Transit cargo van. Okay. Support. All right. I'm Mary. Supported by Lynn. Is there any discussion? All right. Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. Moving into 3.3. This is a board resolution in support of the Dow Chemical Company's effort to consolidate its Midland, Michigan facilities into one unified site. This time, <coughs> I'm going to read the proposed resolution, and then after that, we can I will entertain a motion, and we can have discussion. All right. This is a resolution recognizing the importance of our district to support the city of Midland's largest, most dynamic employer and community partner in its effort to consolidate its Midland, Michigan facilities into one unified site through a one mile closure of South Saginaw Road between Mark Putnam and Salzburg Roads. Whereas Midland Public Schools is a proud contributor of the Midland, Michigan community, Whereas Midland Public Schools prepares future generations to be productive members of society and provides the skills and knowledge necessary for an educated workforce that fuels our city, state, nation, and the world's workforce. Whereas Midland Public Schools recognizes the Dow Chemical Company as a tremendous ally, employer, and champion for the Midland community for 120 years. Whereas Midland Public Schools is sincerely appreciative of the generous, educationally minded community and business partner the Dow Chemical Company has been to our district through the years. Whereas our district is proud to acknowledge that Midland Public Schools is a better and more vibrant public school district because of the partnership 
contribution, and emphasis of the Dow Chemical Company, whereas Midland Public Schools recognizes the essential need of a strong employment base for the parents of our children, of which the Dow Chemical Company plays a major role, whereas Midland Public Schools acknowledges that there will be potentially minor, minor inconveniences for Midland community travelers in the one mile closure of South Saginaw Road. However, the extra measure of the safety and security for our community will be immeasurable. Whereas the contribution that the Dow Chemical Company will play in the future success of the Midland Public Schools and the entire Midland, Michigan community is vital. Therefore, be it resolved, that the Midland Public Schools Board of Education does hereby affirm its support for the South Saginaw Road Closure Project to consolidate the Dow Chemical Company's Midland, Michigan facilities into one cohesive site. Dated the 17th day of July, 2017. So at this time, I'm going to entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the resolution. As Support. Did. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Moved by Brad, supported by Scott. At this time, I will open this up for discussion. Does anyone like to voice their opinion? I just, um, I, I like the fact that it's put in here that there is going to be some inconvenience um, in the closure of that road. I, I'm concerned about um, the opportunity for rescue vehicles and that sort of thing to get through um, unrestricted and also the increased traffic to residential areas that that's my concern but we, we put that in there and I do see the importance of Dow Chemical in Midland community and and their need for wanting to have a secure um, operation so I know from my standpoint, working in manufacturing myself, I understand the importance for them to have their whole facility as on one site. Um, it's, I mean, we run into this type of thing all the time. <coughs> if you were starting from scratch, this might not be how you would do it, but we're not starting from scratch. And so that's, um, this is what they're looking at now as a way to, you know, bring some efficiencies to their process and <coughs> the safety and security of everyone who is working on that site. Just having a road running through the middle of the facility has got to be a huge safety risk. I know with what I do with having large amounts of chemicals and chlorine, mm -hmm. you don't want those types of things running through your facility at all, all, all hours of the night. So that's a huge relief to them, I'm sure, to get that taken care of if it's able to be done. Let alone the government regulations that regulate <coughs> how they can transport things Correct. across the street. Any other This time, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the resolution passes. <coughs> Moving into item four, request to address the board. I mean, there are no requests to address the board tonight. One of these times you're going to speak, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving into five, which is facilities, finance, and operations. So, Patrick, we had a meeting on July 10th. We did. Uh, we did a couple things that night. We First of all, we visited the con construction sites across the district. Uh, myself, Angela, and Mary, I believe, with various administration and Barton Mallow employees. Visited job sites, received tours. Uh, at Central Auditorium, Central Park Elementary, Northeast Middle School. Plymouth Elementary and Woodcrest Elementary. Uh, the second one, we discussed most of these already, but July purchases. Mr. Cooper shared information regarding the purchase of two items which, would be brought, which were brought to tonight's meeting. The first was a purchase of a Ford Transit high van. This van was replacing a 1985 step van with over 175,000 miles. It was chosen based on the high, rear roo high roof, rear wheel drive, and ability to tow. The second purchase tonight was for the upgrading of the district's radio communications system. This purchase continues the radio system conversion to digital from analog. It will improve our radio coverage in the district, especially to the north, add GPS capacity, and add additional digital handheld units for our maintenance and technology departments. Further purchases in these areas will be needed to complete 
our buses and expand our radio communication capacity to the school building level with standardized systems, enhancing the district's ability to communicate in all situations. All purchases are budgeted general fund purchases. Next meeting is Monday, August 14th at 5 o'clock. I have three gifts for information only. You don't have to act on them. Uh, they total six thousand dollars, four thousand uh, for the band at Dow High School from the Music Boosters Club, and a thousand dollars to uh, through the Mid uh, Midland Area Community Foundation, the Dow uh, Community Gives uh, Program. A thousand that's going to Dow High student athletes, and another thousand is going to the Midland High Boys Golf Team. Yep. Thank you to the community for their generous gifts. Moving into six, human resources. Mike? Yes, I'd well, we like to recognize that Susan, Sue Haskey Lane passed away, a former MPS employee on June 11, 2017. Mrs. Haskey was an elementary teacher at Longview Elementary for 32 years, retiring in 1994. We express our deepest sympathy to her family. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, item seven, correspondence to the Board of Education, to and from, you can read that in here. Eight is scheduled activities for information. Just note that our next regular board meeting will be August 21st, 2017. And at this point, we will move into the study discussion section. And I will start with you, Lynn. Ooh. Well, not, a, not a lot to say other than um, it's been fun to go by the buildings and see how they're changing and went by central and back into town and wow it look, I mean it looks almost done however I keep getting people to ask me why the eye isn't in build mm -hmm. so um, they think you know is it not supposed to be there are we waiting for it Did so they haven't happen seen to the other things no yeah. no yeah. so and I'm not sure it's gonna be there much longer uh, um, the foundation was the end of the <coughs> month I think it was oh, okay. so it's, I think the foundation supported that and then uh, throughout the community, so. Yep, I told him you have to stand in the, you have to stand and be the eye, and they just kind of look at me like, what? Yeah. And I took my picture the other day. Um, <laughs> and then I, I could say I've been out of town, but um, reading, I think it was in your letter, Mike, I'm trying to get back in the groove here, um, just all the fun things that are going on at Midland High with the Chemic yes. uh, Challenge. The Chemic Challenge program. I thought, wow. I'd like to go over and do some of those fun activities. So that's neat to have these opportunities in the summer. And other than that, I just hope everybody's having a good summer and taking some time for yourself. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to say I think it's a great step forward in updating of the radios, and I would highly encourage us to look for grants to further that. And, and make it a more expedient process, if at all possible, to get those other buses, to get the schools, and or to get the whole wave technology so that you have a complete mesh across the entire middle public schools, which I think we really need to have that as part of the whole process of secure entrances and everything else to protect the children and wherever they are on the bus in the school, wherever they may be. And that technology can do that. And we just we need to get there uh, as quick as we can. Um, I don't have anything really to add to tonight's agenda other than what's already been said, so right. I'll leave it at that. Excellent. Gary. <coughs> Just um, wanted to say that it was really nice um, being part of FFO and getting a chance to uh, visit uh, the construction sites and, and know that those, I mean, they're really right on target, right on their plan, if not ahead of plan, and um, to make those secure entrances for all our buildings is really nice. and the improvements in the classrooms amazing amazing so we'll be ready for the start of the school year right. Based, sure. not much new the construction uh, it is I'm full confidence it'll get done by the fall I have no worries about that but it is when you see that you realize how daunting that task is and how much was torn up in, in, in those buildings uh, classrooms walls entire walls um, <clears throat> it's something to see and uh, kind of just had something else that slipped my mind. Man, I'm losing my brain here. I guess that's it since I forgot what I was going to say. All right. Excellent. So I guess I just had, well, I thoroughly enjoyed my tour of all the construction projects. And I also went up to Dow High myself to check that one out since 
we hadn't made it up there. Um, the other thing I want to add, so um, sometime this week, or maybe it was last week, I just got to it last night, um, I got an email about the new volunteer sign-up system that we have going in for Midland Public Schools. So it was very um, easy to do. LinkedIn put some information down, and um, I guess it'll take a week or so, and they'll get back with me. And I think at that point, we have to submit some more information, but that's only because we're going to be level two to be able to drive kids. So, But it seemed like it was a very smooth process. So looking forward to um, seeing how that goes and thanking the community partners for partnering with us on that. So all right, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mike. Well, off the construction thing, I, I think uh, one of the amazing things that sometimes our residents don't realize right now is we nearly have every site getting some construction. Um, and so we wanted to make sure you saw Northeast, even though it wasn't uh, scheduled for there, we're pulling lockers ahead early to get that done and need in that building. And then the secure entrances make us touch every building that's still open at this point in time. So pretty big management of that. And um, um, you met the team of Bart and Mel. It's now a team where it was two or three employees. I, I can't remember, if, I think up to five or six total. And then the architects were there as well. And so um, like, like Patrick said, they're pretty confident it's going to be open. I think it's really easy to walk in those buildings and go, really? You know, at this point in time, because they look pretty rough. But uh, um, they're starting to make good progress out there. And Central Park is, uh, we could open today. Um, it, it, everything's there. I saw some furniture coming out today, so I think maybe more of the furniture is arriving. So we're, we're easily ready at Central Park to go. A few outdoor spaces, equipment still arriving, but the bulk of everything's done at this point in time. Um, I sent you uh, in a Friday letter um, a little bit about four things that we're going to work at, work on study, and I think it's pretty important you know those because it could be we could go there, we could not go there, but if we do, there's some ma pretty major change possible in there, right? And the idea of bringing Mandarin in is, is uh, certainly a commitment to try to grow Mandarin where it would be large enough, and so do we start at an elementary level and grow that uh, want, need um, into the middle and high school. Where do we go from there? Um, it, it also will affect our other world languages. As you know, we've struggled a little bit the last few years um, offering all levels of all languages. And so uh, we're going to study that again. And you, you know, we haven't had much luck with kids crossing town to take those programs. And so do we need to look at a different way of doing that via blended or teacher crossing or how we're going to be able to keep those programs alive going forward? And it is our goal to keep all of them alive. It could, you know, could one day they could wean themselves out, right, one of them. But, um, and then adding Mandarin could also do that. But we think Mandarin is a relevant one that we need to add at this point. Um, I've talked to you guys before about um, it was great to start the Young Fours program. It was good to start, uh, excuse me, preschool four-year-old program and Young Fives. Um, there's a goal to maybe start a, a preschool three. Um, we applied for GSRP that could be down the road that where we get a section. But we also took some room space from our elementaries, and that's something like a good idea when we thought we were going to continue to decline at the elementary level. But we have stabilized if not grown a tad at the elementary levels, which is very good. In fact, Brian and the agenda group, uh, Brian, we had Brian bring up today, we were looking at the data again um, of how we're doing with students, Midland County or Midland Public School residents, and where did they choose to go to school. And that data is pretty overwhelming that we are really doing well on that parochial, private, other public. We're doing very well on that trend um, going forward. So we're looking at these programs and saying, should we possibly use a section of Carpenters that's going to stay open with robotics, and should we open an early childhood center? Um, we probably need to pull those people who have chosen that now, even though they won't be, won't be the ones affected, and say, would that have changed your mind at all, like a business would do, to make sure you're not changing a model that takes you away from what you're already successful at. And so we'll look at that and make sure we look real careful of that going forward. Um, the benefit of that would be clearing some space um, in our present elementaries and opening them up. It also will allow us maybe to look at the placement and where we've put our highest need students. Um, this feels sometimes like, again, when, when those programs were at it, we found the most available room, stuck it there. We didn't have this plan um, to start from. And now if we could start all over, how would we balance those classrooms and put them in the right buildings? Um, Siebert, maybe with the, being um, the largest school prior to Central Park, um, and the having multiple high need programs, is that the right spot for it? So we're trying to ease that maybe as we go forward. That would give us a chance. And then the easing to the north, Woodcrest, see we're in our largest schools um, prior to Central Park. And 
potentially, at least what I'm seeing, you know, um, growth maybe to continue to grow to the north. Um, we may need to look at that rezoning plan. So we're going to look at um, what would that be at the elementary. We would not affect any students presently in the system. We would be looking at the slow transition of those students yet to come to us on where they may be zoned or not. And it would be a very small group. We're, you know, the idea would be to move 20, 40 seats out of Woodcrest, Siebert, and free those up as we continue to grow to the north. Or else we will face a much bigger problem out there where we could need a school to the north, something like that, going forward. Um, Siebert was our final school to be IBPYP authorized. All of them are now authorized, so we are moving forward there. Um, the trick as we go forward, and we really do believe STEM fits inside the IBPYP and moves along, but of course there is a little balance there, and it, keeping one spinning strong and then adding the other one in is, is a balance and there's some work to go forward. Um, opening day is always a big day for schools. Um, I think Jerry used to say it, we get to refresh in schools. I'm not so surely true that that's true anymore. We've, the, the sum, summer pace is still pretty heavy, but you get that fresh new start like a new season and opening day kind of kicks that off. We had a great opening day last year when we brought Kathy Nimmer in um, and, she, and her background and who she is and what she did there as Indiana Teacher of the Year was pretty powerful. So I said, I better get to work early because it's certainly not me up there being that dynamic and, and, and doing what she did that day. Um, what is it we can find? And so we kind of worked, um, thought we had an idea, knew we needed to uh, possibly raise some funds, working with Dow Chemical and the, the person that Rob Valentin was trying to find fell through. So Rob kind of said, well, what is it you're interested in? What, you know, could we support you in some way? So we reached out to him and we were able to bring in another national speaker. Um, and so you'll see Jamie Vollmer and you could read about him a little bit and what he does for education. And I think that'll be another good opening day for us. Um, the last one I need to really talk about is um, Jefferson Pool. So we've talked about flood damage. I think the last board meeting I mentioned uh, we were still looking at the damage at Jefferson, which got hit the hardest to pool. And um, today, Bob um, got some feedback from the adjusters and the insurance company that most likely the Jefferson pool will not be covered um, because of um, versus city backup or flood, and where did this come from? And so the damage is somewhere in the two to three hundred thousand range. And so we could very well be facing. If you think of all our pools, if you've been to Jefferson, it's um, a non-competition pool, so you can't swim events, or, uh, it's not full length. Um, we, we've settled all along prior to me. Make sure you understand that we've been talking for a long time that our middle school pools, when they're done, they're probably done. Um, Del High will continue and is a good quality pool going forward. Um, most schools are getting out of the running school community pools. The community and the schools partner and try to figure out how to do that going forward. Um, I think that discussion's come a little faster with the uh, damage to Jefferson and we'll explore there, but it, that pool very well could be done. So we've got a little more studying to do and figure out where that's going, but just a heads up, the damage is significant. Insurance is not going to be able to help us on that. And that's all I have for you tonight. All right. Anything else? All right. Was I no? No. Okay. No. So I turn this meeting in.